We're going to start class today by making painted papers. It will end up looking like these. So you notice in this one there's a lot of, of yellow paper left and different brush marks and that's really nice. That'll make some interesting textures later when we cut it out to collage. So we're going to work together as a class using teamwork to make as many of these colored papers as we can and we will all share the results later. So because we're going to be sharing them, um, we have certain guidelines for painting. So if I want you to choose colors that match this color family. So if I'm choosing brown, I'm gonna use something from this warm color family, several probably different browns, and um, when you're done painting with a color, we're gonna wipe it off on the placemat and dip into a new color. There are two choices. You have the warm color palette or the cool color palette, mostly greens. If you're doing black, then these two are for the black. When our class is done painting all the paper that I have out here, then we are, it's time for you to clean up and you're going to make sure that you were, if everyone at the table is done, you guys can put the lids on these. If other people are still working, you're just gonna take your brush and go to wash it. You're going to take any of these, we're not gonna put our name on them since we're sharing and we're gonna put them on the drying rack. This is how we wash a brush. You get a little soap in your hand you get your brush wet and actually put it down at the bottom. Put your down brush towards the bottom of the sink and get as much of the paint out as you can that way. Then you're gonna hold your brush sideways in your hand and rub it around in the bubbles sideways. Doing this makes sure that Mr. Brush's hairdo doesn't get totally squashed. Keeps him going with the nice mohawk. So you can tell since my paint brushes or my soap bubbles have just turned slightly brown that I probably got most of it out before the rinse. And now when I rinse it, I can see that it's running clear. So I know that my brush is clean and ready to be used for watercolor. After you wash your brush, you're gonna take it back with you to your seat. When you get back to your seat, you're gonna put your placemat in the drying rack and get a piece of watercolor paper. You're going to make sure that you have the side with the tooth on top and you're going to write your name on the back. You're going to use a black crayon to lay out your landscape and you're going to have a sky, a snowy part where you might put trees or animals and then you're going to have a part underneath with a burrow, possibly. So. I'm going to have some hills. This is going to be my sunsetty sky. And then here's my land where the snow is going to be here. And then down here I can put whatever animals are sleeping beneath the snow. And I think I'm going to put um, a couple little burrows. Down here for my animals. Now we have these areas to paint. This middle area is going to be our snowy spot and for that we're going to use the liquid watercolor that's in a cup. And you know, snow is normally white, but on the accents for the hills, you may see, um, you may want to add some more little snow drifts. Maybe there's some um, animal footprints or something like that. You also can add a little salt to your blue. You have to do it when the blue is wet, but it'll leave behind a neat texture. kind of a snow, snowy texture. Okay, then our top, remember to wash, rinse your brush. Give Mr. Brush his nice relaxing bath. 
And then your top area is going to be your beautiful sunset. Use your white crayon to make anything that you want to see in the, in the sky. If you want to have some stars or if you want to have snow falling, you can add that with your white crayon.